because it's sponsored by Skillshare. <laughs> Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in a variety of fields from fine art to marketing. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to courses from experts in their fields so you can improve your skills, have new opportunities, and do the work you love. If you're interested in growing your social media presence or selling art online, you might enjoy the class Social Media Strategy in a noisy, online world. Skillshare is an affordable learning platform with annual subscriptions for less than $10 a month, but if you use my link in the description and are one of the first 500 people to sign up, you can get a two month free trial. That way you can test it out, see if it's useful to you and uh, take advantage of a nice learning opportunity. <laughs> two things. One, I moved. <laughs> I literally moved yesterday. Second, um, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, I have purple hair. New house, new me, still in Utah, okay. This year, I've grown a lot artistically and with my art career, which has brought a lot of new expenses and a lot of mistakes. I thought I would talk to you today about the most expensive art mistakes I've made. So saddle up, my friends. It's time for a journey. What's that Anastasia song? Journey to the past. Journey to the past. On a journey to the past. Lesson one, take care of your tools. The better care you take of your tools, the longer they will last you, the more you'll get out of your investment. This applies on a smaller scale to things like brush care and paint conservation, which I have plenty to say about, but today we are talking specifically about the most expensive mistakes I've made, so in this case the tools I'll discuss are my computer and my phone. Whether you work digitally or use electronics to document work, retouch images, make sales, self-promote, these tools are necessary in an artist's arsenal, and these cautionary tales go out to you. The first and worst expensive tool mistake I made was with my laptop. Three years ago, after making a large cup of carrot apple juice, I knocked my glass on top of my keyboard and completely fried my Mac. Three years later, because of my deep fear of repeating this mistake, after splashing the keyboard of my new laptop with a small amount of water, I used a hairdryer to evaporate the liquid that might have gone under the keys. Subsequently, the keys, seemingly fine at first, in an instant, heated beyond their threshold and then all at once, warped, curled, and lifted up and off my computer. And lastly, my phone, which I used for all my social media posting, to blog, to edit photos, etc. After paying to replace a broken screen and battery, I plugged my phone into a universal charger in China and exploded its innards, killing it. After that, my newest debacle has been in purchasing a used phone that came differently than described from an uncooperative seller that has not returned my funds. Lessons here! Electronics are expensive, but necessary and useful tools. Treat them so carefully, research well, invest well, back to our original thought, a good investment with careful treatment will give you much more worthwhile usage out of those funds ultimately. Lesson two, know what you'll use. Don't invest unless you're ready. Largely, if a person wants to be creating artwork, they will do it with or without the optimal tools. When I first really got into acrylics on this channel, I started with 50 cent paints. I used the crap out of them and loved them. After time, I proved myself that I did and would use them regularly, and that is when I made the investment in nicer, thicker body acrylics. If you're on a budget and want to invest in expensive drawing or painting materials, be reflective. Are you sure you will use that item? Do you have a real need for it? Do you have any past experience with similar tools to tell you how useful it will be to you. This cautionary tale is actually one of another's loss and my benefit. Whoops. Freshman year of college, I landed the best deal on a large set of oil paints and brushes. $50 for unused supplies that cost 400 new just weeks before. I purchased these from a girl who thought she wanted to be an art major and then decided against it days before the semester. Okay, I respect the crap out of the choice to switch paths and do its best for you, but that was definitely an expensive lesson that may have been helped with considering some of the questions we just posed. Or then a good no. I mean it's college, who really knows what the crap they're doing. I know without thinking critically about these myself though, I have invested 
in beautiful, quality, expensive marker and colored pencil sets that have sit largely untouched in my closet for the last 10 years. One last piece of advice to piggyback here, know what supplies it pays to invest in. While some supplies you will see a major quality difference in depending on the price tag, others you may not have a proportional benefit with the cost increase. Based on my personal studio practice and needs, this applies to my paintbrushes. I used to use more costly ones and then switch to a cheap pack of soft acrylic brushes and I love them. I went brush shopping recently for larger brushes and let me tell you, they can get very costly, like $50 and up per brush kind of expensive. I did buy one mid-grade larger brush because I needed it, but I still plan to purchase and get plenty of use out of my my variety packs. Lesson three, be smart about sales. If you think you aren't old enough or far enough in your art journey to be thinking about this, think again. The business end of art is widely under discussed in our education and you need to start to learn this stuff if you ever want to make money off of your hard work. You can encounter some major financial hits if you don't consider these things. One, know your worth. At a certain point, if you want to be a professional, you have to charge a living wage for your time and talent. Especially in the early stages, you may feel impossible syndrome about selling or guilt when asked for free work from friends or family, but it's important that if people see the value in your work enough to ask for your services, that they and you also value the time, training, and funds you've put into your education and development. While I have a lot of experience feeling awkward or guilty charging, no single story stands out above the others. Just know that I sympathize for the discomfort of the stage, but that it is so worth it in the end to respect yourself and your hard work. Look around at other artists in similar stages of their careers and make a consistent pricing scale for your work. This benefits both you as the artist aiming to grow in your career as well as for your clients so they are able to see predictability and consistency in your sales and brand. On a similar note, if you are building an online presence and approached by companies to share information about their products to your followers, know your worth there too. Depending on the size of your following, there is a financial value to the advertising you do for companies. Make sure they are not taking advantage of you by asking for a service worth monetary compensation and then giving you nothing in return. Two, make contracts for commissioned work. I haven't personally lost money because of not doing this, but it's a good thing for you to know, so I'm including it. You can find templates online for guidance, agree on image details, time frame, price, then secure a partial non-refundable deposit that ensures you are paid for your time and that there is a commitment from both parties. The same is true again with companies. Make sure any sponsored content you make comes with a contract to ensure you are paid for your services. Three, and this is where I got really hit. Prepare for taxes. <laughs> if you begin selling work regularly beyond the scope of a hobby, be prepared for self-employment tax. Working for yourself, employers are not setting aside money for your taxes. It's important you keep track of business expenses, art supplies, shipping fees, etc. for write-offs, and also that you have money set aside from sales for tax season. I still have limited knowledge about these things, but without any knowledge last year, I ended up paying $4,000 into taxes and had no record of expenses to offset that. Yeah, expensive lesson learned. Four, research, research. I'm not sure how to make this personal experience into a universal lesson other than to say research and then tell a story that hopefully can put you in a mind frame to avoid similar problems. One of the most expensive lessons I learned this year ended up in the purchase of another computer. I had a laptop that was not optimized for the settings necessary to run my video editing software, but up until this year it had handled editing fine. Then it stopped. Knowing the computer wasn't meant to run the program, I decided to buy a new, expensive computer that would definitely run it. But due to unnecessarily complicated and boring details, I didn't realize until after my return period was over that my new computer had the same problem running my software. I brought it in to be looked at and through some effort realized the whole time my computer was never the problem, my external hard drive was. Essentially, I bought a non-refundable computer only to find that my hard drive was the real cause of my issue. So I solved what should have been a $100 problem with 1.5. 5k instead. Lesson, if you are not techie, talk to someone who is before you do something, anything remotely, like what I did. Lesson five, 
money comes and goes. Be prepared to learn expensive lessons of your own. I have had to and will continue to learn more expensive lessons throughout my career. Some of the most expensive ones I haven't even mentioned. It's stressful in the moment and it sounds like a simplification, but trust me, I know it's stressful. But it's all in pursuit of worthy causes. Go easy on yourself when you make mistakes. Money comes and goes. It's an important thing to learn. So many times when people get in a real financial bind, we seem to find a way to get through these expensive mishaps. The stress will pass in time, you'll grow and be wiser for it. And hopefully you can avoid a few just by listening to me too. If you guys would like to support this channel, it's much appreciated if you just follow along with my social media accounts, give videos a like, make sure you're subscribed. Hope you're here next week. Yes.